It's like nesting three fusion chambers inside each other, and they've all lost containment. It's time for some more XKCD. Specifically, what if all the sun's power was focused in one place? Or what if the sun really is a deadly laser? For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's see. This question comes from Max, who asks, what if all the sun's output of visible light were bundled up into a laser-like beam that had a <laughs> diameter of around one meter once it reached the Earth? All right, so this is what happens when physicists stop respecting the laws of thermodynamics and asking the really fun questions. So the sun puts out about 3.8 times 10 to the 26 power watts, or 100 billion trillion nuclear plants. Now, Earth only would intercept about one part in 2 billion of that. And this max person is saying, let's focus it into one meter. So 3.8 times 10 to the 26 watts per square meter. At least the math's easy. For comparison, the sun's surface is only 63 megawatts per square meter. So this beam is 10 trillion times brighter than the sun's surface. Okay. You know, I usually assume the best of people, but I'll be honest, I suspect Max might not have Earth's best interests in mind. <laughs> Can't imagine why you'd possibly say that. Here is the situation Max is describing. If you were standing in the path of the beam, you would obviously die pretty quickly. You would undergo a phase change. So at 10 to the 26 watts per square meter, atoms can't hold on to their electrons. You'd be ionized faster than your nervous system could transmit the pain signal. So at least it'd be painless. So this is mass energy conversion speed beyond simple heat. The radiant flux density would be comparable to the energy density at the center of a thermonuclear explosion, except sustained. After all, the energy of a thermonuclear explosion is over in a few shakes. A shake is 10 nanoseconds. So energy density of a hydrogen bomb that doesn't stop exploding. You wouldn't really die of anything in the traditional sense. You would just stop being biology and start being physics. <laughs> Man, that is such a great explanation. Yeah. Chemistry is going to give up first, and then nuclear physics will take over. You'll go from organic matter to plasma, to ionized vapor, to atomic nuclei, and eventually stripped quarks. All in a fraction of a second, by the way. Gammas are going to smash nuclei apart. Or this is what stars experience in supernova cores. Uh, photon flux is so intense, they're going to unbind heavy nuclei. So this is a supernova starter kit? The Earth receives about 0.004% as much energy from the sun in an entire day as the sun emits every second. Okay, specified visible light. Yeah, it, okay, sure. That's that's going to cut it in half, but it, it's not going to matter. <laughs> Rough order of magnitude, uh, cutting it in half does nothing. If Max's beam were only focused down narrowly enough to cover the entire Earth, it would still deliver almost 2 billion times the normal amount of solar power to each point on the Earth's surface. Yeah, so at that point, solar panels would work for a fraction of a second until they fall apart. So when people say solar energy is abundant, sure, but again, to match the sun, you're going to need over 100 billion trillion nuclear power plants. But yeah, this is already a global extinction event right here, focused to the face of the Earth. This would figure out to about a couple million megawatts per square meter, or roughly a reactor core dumping its entire energy on a postage stamp. So imagine the blue Cherenkov glow everywhere at this point. And Max wants to concentrate all of that into a single square meter. When the beam of light hit the atmosphere, it would heat the air to millions of degrees in a fraction. <laughs> Your units don't matter at this point of a second, turning into a plasma, which would start dumping its heat as a flood of x-rays. Those x-rays would heat up the air around them, which would turn to plasma itself. So at these temperatures, molecules break into atoms, atoms lose electrons, and the air becomes a sea of ionized particles. So like he's showing, a superheated plasma column. So in an actual nuclear power plant, we work to shield against a few thousand curies worth of x-rays. This right here would create instantaneous global radiation fluence comparable to that of a star's corona. And because plasma is partially transparent to its own radiation, energy is going to escape as a flood of x-rays creating a cascade of them. 
be it a cooler plasma, and start emitting infrared light. The radiation would vaporize everything in sight and start stripping away the Earth's surface. Like a hydrogen bomb, only much more violent. <laughs> Oh yes, so an X-ray driven blast front. By the way, let's quantify that. A large thermonuclear bomb's about 10 megatons. The biggest one ever designed is 100 megatons. It was never detonated. That was the bigger SAR bomber. So this beam is giving off about four times 10 to the 26. So, so nine to 10 billion times the energy of SAR bomber. Yeah, you wouldn't get a crater from this. You'd get planetary erosion. The surface rock would vaporize to plasma jets and some of it would escape Earth's gravity entirety. Another way of looking at this is this is ablation on a planetary scale. Kind of like the early solar systems accretion disk process but you're running it in reverse. But the Earth is big enough to protect people on the other side, at least for a bit, from the... Yeah, they'll, they'll survive the first second. <laughs> then the rest of the atmosphere will become a problem. You'll get thermal runaway, a twilight shell that wraps around the globe. At this point, even if you turn this thing off, the entire atmosphere is incandescent. Direct effects of the sunbeam. They're still not going to make it, but what exactly would they die from? Turns out, twilight. Or moonlight, yes. it depends on the details. Twilight is light from the out-of-sight sun that reaches you by mm -hmm. scattering off the atmosphere. When Max's sunbeam hit the Earth, everything from infrared radiation to X-rays would flood into the atmosphere, turning into plasma. Plasma is relatively transparent to X-rays, so those would pass through and dump their energy into the non-plasma air around it. He yes, this is good. I like his physics knowledge. And at tens of millions of degrees, so the plasma is going to be dominated by Compton interactions. So the X-rays would pass through, deposit their energy deeper and you'd end up with a multi-layered thermal front with an inner plasma core at millions of degrees, a medium X-ray scattering layer, and an outer infrared glow shell. It's like nesting three fusion chambers inside each other, and they've all lost containment. <laughs> <laughs> being it enough to give off its own substantial thermal radiation. In general, a lot of this radiation would escape into space, where we don't need to worry about it unless it gets reflected back to Earth. Unfortunately, a portion of the radiation would stay within the atmosphere. Remember, a portion is still too much because this is the entire energy of the sun being concentrated. I mean, this is the ultimate quadrillion pounds into a five pound bag and see what happens kind of scenario. Yeah, a little bit of it escaping, no. A bubble of heat and light would wrap around the earth, a twilight inferno rapidly heating the atmosphere and surface as it went. I love how he's kind of downplaying it. His deadpan tone is pretty good, but now, nah, let's call it what it is, a full planetary incineration wave. It would also photo dissociate the water, burn away nitrogen and strip ozone. So that's what your atmosphere is going to look like for a little bit longer. It's going to resemble the ion plume from a fusion drive, except instead of propelling a ship, it's evaporating the crust. That's another way to get into space. What's more, much of the matter around the sunbeam's contact point would be blasted into space, where it would reflect infrared light back down beyond the horizon. Exactly. Yes, like a fission ejecta cloud, except the ejecta mass can be hundreds of trillions of tons. So this ejecta would reflect the infrared and X-ray radiation back down onto the night side, extending the destruction through radiative feedback. In other words, forming an Earth-scale detonation chain reactor. How quickly the devastation would make it around the Earth depends on many details of atmospheric scattering, but if the moon happened to be half full at the time, it might not even matter. When Max's device kicked in, the moon would go dark, since the sunlight illuminating it yeah, would be funneled into the that's beam true. that's destroyed. That's true, you're, you're concentrating it, and no light's going anywhere else in the solar system. The atmosphere. The intense light from the destruction would itself, however, illuminate the moon, and this reflected moonlight alone could be enough to burn you to death. That's that's interesting. I didn't even <laughs> think about how much reflecting off the moon at this point. Yeah, depends where you are in the lunar cycle. Just in time for the incendiary twilight to wrap around the planet, bringing on one final sunrise. But Earth might not be entirely doomed. Can Max's mechanism actually swivel to track a target? <laughs> Like the Death Star, could it fire off Axis? If not, the Earth can only spend a maximum of about seven minutes in the path of the beam before our orbit carries us out of the way. So that's your only hope. I mean, Earth's moving at 30 kilometers a second, and the beam's only one meter across. But that's, that's a long time. The exposed region be vaporized to magma, the atmosphere stripped, and the dark side roasting from all of the bouncing radiation. Even if the core survived, you'd be left with an airless, molten earth remnant, though the moon would glow from the reflected light.
Interesting you brought up the moon. Everyone on the surface would still be cooked, of course, and much of the atmosphere and exterior yes. would be lost, but the bulk of the Earth would probably remain as a testament to humanity's horrible ideas. Yeah, a scaled-down supernova ablation. So in nuclear engineering, we deal with megawatts of power and worry about keeping fuel from melting. Here we're talking 10 to the 26 power watts, and melting the planet is the starting condition. Even in advanced fusion reactors, like ITER, you're dealing with maybe 50 megawatts of plasma power. Here we're dealing with many quadrillions of times greater than that. But this beam does show how powerful stellar fusion really is. And after all, we can barely reproduce a few grams of that reaction energy in our labs compared to the sun converting 4 million tons of matter directly into energy every second. Thanks so much for the recommendation. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.